All right, so finally, the video that you've all been waiting for. We're gonna build some more Legos, right? No, not yet, sorry. I promised you the setup video for a7 IV first, so yeah. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Sony a7 IV for wedding photography. I'm gonna show you how I set it up and what are the other possible options setting this camera up. So are you guys ready? Bam. Hello everyone, my name is Magic, I'm a wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador, father of four children, welcome to this YouTube channel where I mostly talk about wedding photography and gear and mainly Sony gear, so lenses, cameras, accessories and all that stuff. And today we're setting up Sony a7 IV that I have been shooting since it was launched and actually before it was launched I got it in my hands. It took me a while to make this video because I wanted to have a setup that I feel comfortable with so I needed to shoot a few weddings and sessions and you know get all that stuff rolling and be comfortable about wherever I'm gonna show you it's relevant to what I do and possibly to you guys so other wedding photographers so let's just do it we're gonna go for all the main stuff all the most important stuff and then some cool tips and tricks the customization stuff how to customize the buttons how I customize my buttons how I customize the, the, the mode dial up here so there's plenty of cool stuff uh, coming okay starting with the with the most important one image quality so I do shoot raw and I do shoot compress raw all the time because I wanted to take benefit from the 10 frames per second and that, that's it basically that's it I'm, I have a video of comparing compressed to lossless compressed to uncompressed so choose whatever you're comfortable with maybe you don't need 10 frames per second then I think lossless compressed is a great option uncompressed I don't see many benefits of using uncompressed maybe you're doing like super high in wedding photography that it's rather slow so you don't need 10 frames per second and it's maybe in challenging um, you know conditions and then you want to take benefit of uncompressed throws and you can just bring up stuff from shadows like without limits and so on but like for the work I do and for the way I work I use compressed rows now I don't shoot raw plus JPEG I only shoot raw and then when you go to record media settings this is how you set up a recording to two cards simultaneously so this is my high recommendation shoot raw to both of the cards uh, so this is simultaneously recording photos and here is simultaneously recording video so as a wedding photographer I think it's crucial to have backup right away like when you are shooting other stuff here is is non-relevant actually so aspect ratio is only relevant to JPEG files file format is for video movie settings is for video here this is a crop this is for both photo and video as you can see the, the little icon on the left so I, I set it to off I don't use crop in my camera uh, because the cropping in camera when shooting photos is exactly the same as cropping later on in post so for me there's no need of using this actually um, color space I do use S RGB and then lens compensation I actually have changed a few things around here so I do use shading and chromatic aberration compensation but I don't use distortion compensation I can always turn this on later on in Lightroom but I actually like the distortion from lenses you know it gives like more interesting look to the photos I think media we have this record media settings here that we set up before so there is no need here file so you have here this, the, the folder settings how do you want your files to be named and saved so I I do encourage you guys to actually fill this up the way you want so the way I do it I have two identical cameras so I set my my file names one MA from magic that's gonna be the first camera and the second camera is gonna be 2 MA and then the numbers so I can easily filter uh, photos from one camera or the other I use date for for the folders so when you have a setup like this um, the photos will be divided in the into the folders depending on what date they were shot at I also uh, include copyright information here so you can set up your name here the copyright set photographer so that's completely up to you you can also do it later on in post uh, but yeah why not doing it right 
away. So in shooting mode, we're actually going to get into this later on. So when I set up all my camera, I'm going to save all the settings to one of the dials. Uh, but yeah, let's skip it for now. USB streaming. I don't do this. Drive mode, like you can actually set up from the camera. I use continuous uh, shooting all of the time, basically. Um, so here's the nothing interesting specific for weddings. Then shutter. I always use mechanical shutter. I don't use silent shutter. I recommend using mechanical shutter all the time and if you have a specific need to use a silent shutter and you are sure that you are shooting under a natural light conditions then you're safe to change it to to silent but silent will give you a banding so there's black strips of light if you're shooting under artificial light so so this is actually very dangerous to shoot silent shutter all the time in this camera i would recommend shooting mechanical and possibly switching to silent if you need and if you're sure you can avoid banding i have e front curtain shutter on um, here i have enabled um, release without lens and enabled release without card that's mostly like the, the lens one is mostly for adapted lenses and without card is mostly for for my test purposes i would recommend actually disabling this so you want um, be able to take a photo without card on. That's going to be actually the additional layer of safety if you forgot your card and you started shooting and you realized after, I don't know, shooting for a few hours. Um, I don't know. It could be dangerous. So, so I recommend disabling this anti-flicker. I have set it to on. So this is to avoid flickering in the photos flickering is different from bending so flickering is when you're sh you're shooting under also artificial light and sometimes the photo is going to be a little darker sometimes the whole photo is going to be a little brighter so i do recommend having anti-flicker set to on especially when you're shooting weddings you you're dealing with a lot of interiors artificial light etc so so yeah image stabilization i have it set to on no need to get into details zoom I don't use any electronic zooming features shooting display so i do have my grid line displayed on and i use the rule of, of thirds that helps me keep my photos straight that helps me use the rule of thirds to compose my images better so yeah so that's what i use um, and here if you go to the live view display settings okay so th this is this is where uh i do i strongly recommend this is by default set to on I, I strongly recommend not changing this um so live view display settings effect on means that whatever you you see on the screen or on viewfinder reflects the actual settings of the photo so whenever you take a photo it's going to be exactly the same what you see on the screen so if you underexpose uh, your settings you're going to see it directly on the screen if you would set it set it to off it will be always you know exposed correctly on the screen even though if you underexpose the image so the image is going to be different from what you see on the screen this might be valuable for whenever you shoot with flash but that is set up uh, here under here so i use exposure settings only not exposure settings and flash okay the third menu it's a pink menu so this is the the good moment to tell you i'm actually most of the time shooting aperture priority these days i've changed it i used to shoot manual all the time when i had my sony a7r3 cameras um, especially with our series of cameras so they have more megapixels there's more noise on higher isos and i wanted to have a full control on iso and basically the settings of my camera with a7 IV, i actually decided to go for aperture priority so i use aperture priority with iso auto so here you set up uh, your iso auto um, you set up the, the way that you can limit the minimum and maximum value of the iso i i wouldn't recommend going to the highest iso 6400 it's very safe 8000 very safe 12800 also safe i think the problem with the noise could start somewhere around 16000 or 20000 so i'll, I'll keep it at 25600 iso range limit that's a general limit for like basically full camera i don't change it at all and then iso auto minimum shutter speed i have it set up on like 1 250th of a second but i'm gonna be changing it 
depending on what I'm shooting. I have it under one of my custom buttons, so I'm gonna show you. Exposure compensation, um, I have set up everything here to default. I haven't changed anything here. Metering, like I don't touch metering because it doesn't matter these days when I can see on the screen exactly well what my image will look like. I don't see any point of using or changing metering. In flash tab, I don't have anything specific to set up here, white balance, also pretty standard. I basically use uh, use custom white balance for what, what I shoot. So I have it under one of my custom buttons that I will show you later on. Color and tone. I have D-range optimizer set to off, a picture profile set to off, and creative look. That basically just applies to the JPEG preview. So I have it set to standard. D-range optimizer also um, is only applying to JPEG files. So basically if you wanna just flatten your image a little bit in the viewfinder on the screen, you can just turn it on, but otherwise it doesn't make much difference when you're shooting raw. Zebra display, I don't use this at all. And, and then out of focus settings. So focus mode, I always use continuous out of focus. I don't see any reason not using continuous out of focus, especially with a camera that has a tracking mode like Sony a7 IV. So to benefit from the tracking, you have to have continuous out of focus. So this is what I set up here. Uh, since I don't use AFS, uh, the settings here are irrelevant. Uh, this was probably for some testing. So what I have in priority set in AFC is balanced emphasis. So it's basically you set up if you want camera to make sure that it focuses first before you can take the shot or you want to prioritize just clicking the shutter no matter if, if it made it, you know, fo focus wise. So balance is something in between and it's a default setting and I find it working uh, perfectly for the work I do. AF tracking sensitivity is actually an important one because you can decide whether you want to, you know, the autofocus stick more to the subject uh, you locked on first, no matter if there's something getting in front of the subject for, you know, a couple of seconds. So let's say you're focusing on one person and then a second person would, would go in front of it. If you go responsive, the camera can just quickly change to the person that would jump in front of the other person. So the, the, the camera will reshift the focus for the second person. If you will stay uh, here under one, so lock on, it will stick more to the initial subject. So I have it also under my quick menu so I can quickly change it from one to the other. Standard is a default setting and I find it work quite well, but if you find your camera maybe not sticking enough or maybe you have situations like confetti when, when couple gets out of the church and you don't want a camera reshifting the focus to confetti, you can then switch to lock on. And then if you have lots of people dancing and you like you just want to capture whatever quickly gets in front of you, you might want to change it to responsive. AF Illuminator, I was actually playing around with this uh, recently. I would actually recommend turning this uh, to off so you don't want to interrupt you know, people with the light since the out of focus in this camera is wild either way. But if you have problems shooting, you know, under dark conditions, you might want to change it to on. But also if you have a problem shooting dark conditions on higher F values, you might want to go here. So by default, aperture drive in AF is set to standard. Um, I would recommend to changing it to focus priority. I have a full video on this. It basically makes AF way better if you're shooting under dark conditions and higher F values. For full explanation, go check my other video. An AF with shutter, that's by default on, and I also use my autofocus with shutter as well. If you wanna, you know, separate your your autofocus from a shutter, so you're gonna do like back button focus, you, you might wanna change it to off and then switch the autofocus um, to one of the custom buttons. Pre-AF, so it basically um, focuses before you have pressed the shutter. Um, so it might, might result in just faster AF basically, so why not use it? Then focus area settings, so I basically use tracking now all the time. I use tracking spot, so this is the point that I'm using. I'm using a joystick to move the point, then I'm gonna track some subject and then possibly recompose. And that's my main uh, focusing uh, area mode. I might use sometimes zone when I only have a couple in front of me or basically why I'm going to be doing a separate video like showing you examples of all of these um, at the wedding scenario but basically 
tracking spot is is very efficient because you can you can just you can just use your point half press the shutter to lock on whatever it sees and then recompose when you keep pressing the shutter you see so i'm just recomposing right now and then you can just quickly change the point and grab another thing so so that's how i use i use a point to grab and lock my focus on a certain people or certain objects in my frame. Focus area limit. So basically, here you, you can just turn on stuff that you don't use. Um, I, I don't bother with this. Switch vertical horizontal AF area. I have set it off to off. Focus area color is the color of the focus here. So I have it set to red. AF area registration. I don't use it. Um, uh, be, 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 be. Area display during tracking. I have set it actually to on. So what it is is that when you half press your shutter to lock on on some subject, you can still see the red point. You see the red frame of my point. I can still see it. If I will turn this to off, so I bring this here. Uh, I will lock on something. I don't see the point anymore. Um, why I have set it to on? Because it, like I do use actually the point and I do recompose a lot so I can grab something. But then I, I might quickly see something else. I might write, recompose seeing where my point is and just recompose to whatever else I want to shoot. So let's say there's like this guy here. So we have Thor and I will lock on a magic. I can see Tor is approaching, so I can actually recompose and just quickly grab it while still tracking the first subject and taking photos. So that's 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 why I use it. I know how useful this might be for you, but yeah, that, that's what it is. AFC area display. I don't use any of this. Circulation of focus point. I have it set up to does not circulate. So what, what it does, if you set it to circulate, uh, you might, uh, the point, if you use the joystick, um, you go to the right, it will go and go and go and go and go and go and go like this. So, it, like, no limits. Uh, when you have set it to does not circulate, it will just end at the end of the frame. Um, so, I have set to does not circulate because if I want to, like, quickly go to the corner, I might just want to, like, whoosh, just quickly, you know, use my joystick to go um, here to the right corner and, and and grab something from here you know and I don't want a focus point to go over to the low left bottom corner so yeah so that's 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 why it does not circulate AF frame the move um, so this is basically the steps of how fast you can go from a certain point so so if you have it set to standard um, going from center to the top will give you one two three four five six seven eight, nine, nine steps. Uh, and if you go to large, it will go one, two, three, four, five, six steps only. Okay, so yeah, how fast you wanna use your point. I use the smaller step, so standard for me. A face and eye out of focus. So I have face and eye priority. I have face and eye human. I have subject selecting. Uh, I, I actually don't use this at all. Right and left I have auto but I also have it set on my one of my custom buttons that I will show you that I can quickly change an eye face and eye frame display. This is what I use so this is why you can see this frame right now. I'm just gonna you know point my camera at some faces. Face memory I don't use it. Registration face priority uh, I, I don't use it. Okay we're moving to focus assistant. Auto magnifier in manual focus I have set to off. Uh, some, like, some people like it so if you use manual lenses or basically a manual focus and you set it to on um, you, you switch to manual focus. Whenever you turn the focusing ring it will right away magnify. Okay cool. Um, but for me, I actually have it set to off because I prefer use a button to to zoom in. I will show you my custom button. So I, I use the button to zoom in, bam, the point I want and then focus. Um, because yeah, sometimes I, I just, I'm, I'm just focusing really quickly like this and I don't want, I want to see the full frame. I want to see the full composition. I don't want it to go um, to zoom in. Um, without my will.
Fogo's magnifier time, I have set it to no limit. So basically, it's the same thing. If you if you use this Fogo's magnifier, if you set it to two seconds, it will go back to non-zoom mode after two or five seconds. So I have set to no limits. I have to press actually the button. Um, and then initial focus magnification, I have set it to uh, 0.1. Uh, out of focus, in focus magnification. See, it only works if you have set your camera to AF. S. So if you will switch your camera to AFS and you will zoom in, you can use autofocus here. You see, this is high precision autofocus. Picking display off, picking level, I don't use picking. Select playback media. So now we are in playback mode. There's actually nothing interesting that I changed um, here. I don't have anything specific here in this smart for connection. And, and then we're going to go to the last setup and the customization because all the customization is, is here. So date and area, pretty easy. Reset safe settings, pretty easy. And here we have all the customization. So all the buttons I will just get into in one second. I'm just gonna finish these. So touch operation I use on playback only. Um, I don't use touch um, screen basically, but if you want, you, you set it up here. On finder monitor, I have it set to auto. I have it set to sunny weather. So auto is basically means that whenever you move your face, towards the camera. It uses here um, this, this funky little sensor to switch to viewfinder immediately and that's how I use my camera and I use display quality of the viewfinder uh, high uh, rather than standard. If you change to standard you can change to higher frame rate but I prefer higher quality. And then right here, uh, to this auto review. So here, depending if I shoot it with flash or no flash, I have it set to off or two seconds. Um, so right now I'm gonna show you um, non-flash settings. So I set it to off. Remain should display, just displays on the left. You see that little bar on the left just shows where is the buffer limit shooting, whatever I'm shooting right now. You see it goes down, slowing down, and then you release, yeah. So that's a, just a cool visualization of your buffer. So uh, by, def by default, it's not display. I have it always display, because why not? Power saving option, I have auto monitor uh, off after 10 seconds and power save by monitor. So but by default, I think it's set to linked. So whenever you would close the screen, it will just turn off the camera, like power off the camera, which was annoying because I would often just close the screen and go right, you know, eye to the viewfinder to take photos and it wouldn't let me because it was off. So I had to half press the shutter to wake up the camera, like stupid. Uh, does not link is the way to avoid this. So right now, if I'm gonna, you know, close the screen facing down, it will, like my camera still works immediately. You see, so now if I'm gonna do uh, both link and I would close the screen, up, it, it went to sleep. And I needed a time to wake this up. So does not link is the way to go. Out of power of temperature, it's, it's mostly for video, so it doesn't go overheat. So I, I have set it to high. Sound options, doesn't matter for wedding photography. USB doesn't matter. External output doesn't matter. A setup options here. Anti-dust, you know, I have it shutter when power off to off. I have full video on why I don't use anti-dust shutter and nothing else here is important. All right, so that was going through all the menu. Now I'm going to get into cool customization stuff. So first of all, what I'm using, I'm using my menu. So here in the top, you have the star. There's, it's an easy way to just add items to make your own menu. So here I have the main stuff that I cannot access uh, by buttons or I don't need to access by buttons, but I do need to change constantly. So probably there's some of these for you as well. It's going to be different for for different user. So first one is the area date and time setting. So when shooting with two cameras, every week before a wedding, I'm gonna synchronize the timing on both of my cameras. So I'm gonna check if the timing is exactly the same. And so is it synced? Then the format I use, I format all my cards in the camera. So I actually use the format feature. So that's why I have it here. Auto review on and off. I told you that when I'm using a flash, I will set it to 
on so i wanted to have it also quickly accessible green grid line display i most of the time have it on but just in case uh, if i want to change it i have it here or also iso range limit i don't know why actually that's that's a mistake it's probably supposed to be uh, auto iso range limit that's that's my bad actually hdmi info display so this is the setting for recording screen that i'm doing right now if i would set it to off it wouldn't record the menu of the camera and touchpad setting so if i would want to use the touch screen um, i would use it in a touchpad way so that's why i have some touchpad settings here but basically um, it's just in case if I want to change it or show to somebody doing a workshop or something. So that's my menu. So that's the first layer of customization. And then the coolest layer of customization is all the buttons and the dials. So the way I have it set up uh, is actually for my needs, right? So for the way I am shooting. So first of all, since I am shooting auto ISO, I want to have a quick access, as I told you, to changing the ISO auto minimal shutter speed. So I have it under my AEL button. So the first custom button is set to this. The second one, so the big one, AFO on, is set to I out of focus. So basically I use the eye out of focus to be released uh, when I have pressed the shutter but if you are using a point like I am um, and your point is not close to someone's face and you're gonna half press the shutter uh, it, you're just gonna track something some object. If I would have a face here let's just use the album with the image of the bright let's say here so I'm gonna actually have a object and a bright to show you how does that work so right now in frame I have someone's face and you see the camera recognizes the face but if I'm using a point like right now and I'm gonna half press a shutter on this little guy here uh, I'm gonna track it as an object not as a person but now if I would click my AFON so I autofocus button it will right away find the closest face to my point and focus on it. So that's actually pretty useful because right now it's also tracking that face. Um, of course, if I want to decide what, what which face is, there's more face, so I want to track on, I will use the point. But uh, if my point is far away from a face, I see someone coming, I, I can just quickly click eye out of focus to focus on someone's eyes and face and yeah, stuff like that. So that's, uh, that's quite useful to have it under your custom um, button. Then on my C1 button, so a third custom button here, I do have focus magnifier. So what I showed you, if I'm using a manual focus lenses, I will zoom in using a button and that's the button I'm gonna use. Then the button number four, I have to switch right to left eye. I actually barely use it. It's mostly set to auto. So. The way it works when you set it to button, um, like C3, when you press once, it's gonna go to one eye. When you press second time, it's gonna go to second eye. And then if you wanna cancel, you see it, it shows RLI select cancel. You have to click the center button and then it cancels it. So it goes back to auto. So the situation that I might use it will be the, the getting ready when I'm really close to the bride and I wanna focus on a specific eye rather than the other eye. Maybe one is being actually, um, you know, the, the makeup is being performed on one eye at that point. So I, I wanna focus on one specific eye. So that's why I have it under a custom button. And then a, an, a fun one, camera set memory. I will get into this one in one second. So basically what it does, it's gonna record all the settings that I have right at the moment to one of the custom mode dials right here. But I will show it in a second because I first wanna set all my camera with my all base settings and then show you how I use this function. And um, then the rest button, so, so th this is default. So default, we have focus standard here. So using a point by joystick. Center button is for me record media settings. So if I wanna change shooting to one slot or simultaneous recording, I can just quickly do it using a center button. As I told you by default, I, using, I use simultaneously recording, but very often since doing all these reviews and doing all these test photos. I don't use two cards for a test photos of my Lego guys here. I'm just going to use one card. Um, so that's why I just have it right here very quickly, very easily accessible. 
Okay, then these two left and right on the control wheel are by default drive mode and ISO and this is how I use them because these are marked so that's easy and, and the down button I have set to aperture drive in AF so again um, changing back from focus priority possibly to standard and then the record button that used to be C1 and it used to be white balance and my muscle memory is changing is one of changing white balance right here so that's why I change it back to white balance so I use this record movie button to white balance um, yeah that's what I do and the, the, the point number two I use to change focus area so that's by default and then uh, on the on the lenses you have additional buttons I actually use mostly G Master lenses right now so I have this button and I use this to aperture preview that you can use uh, when using aperture drive again I do refer to that aperture drive video and then wheels in manual mode I have shutter in front dial and aperture in the rear dial so it's actually reversed from default it's more like Canon default I used to shoot Canon back in the day so I was used to this so I'm switching back to this the exposure compensation I use as exposure compensation and then the control wheel I don't use at all because I use cameras on straps I use cameras my cameras usually just hang left and right and when I had it set to anything it would just randomly change my settings so no I don't use control wheel at this time okay and after customizing your buttons you can do it for video as well you can also do it for the playback mode which is there is not much to do so I'm gonna just gonna skip it but then you have this really cool important uh, FN menu settings that's a quick menu that you can just set up it's separate for photo separate for video so some stuff uh, that you want to maybe use but you don't have enough custom buttons so um, and then you can access this by clicking F and it will just pop up this box of you know 12 features that you can set up 12 settings so what I have here is the stuff that I don't necessarily use that much but from time to time occasionally I might want to change it so that's why it's here so I don't have to go to the menu so there's silent mode anti flicker that I can turn it off, the picture profile, the AF tracking sensitivity, so the one that I showed you before, so locked on or responsive, you can change it here. Then focus mode, for, so from, from AFC to manual, I can go for whatever reason I have. Um, touch operation, then the aperture drive, um, exposure effect changing from exposure settings only to exposure settings and flash, so depending on how I wanna shoot and like what I wanna see, on the screen um, during shooting with flash so that might be uh, also you know helpful from time to time then the cropping so basically I use this just for test videos um, yeah that, and that's it steady shot image quality settings and the record media settings so I also have this under the button but yeah have it here as well so that's a quick menu the the only cool thing would be so if picture profile could load a Lightroom preset that would be killer that's that's a feature request please Sony make that I think that's a feature that will be able to shoot JPEGs that have the presets already applied and then I would use my Magic Adabra presets that you can buy they're on sale store.magicweddingphotographer.com you can buy my one and only preset that I edit all my photos with and then uh, with full editing course over 120 minutes of videos of me editing uh, photos yeah go bye please thank you and now the fun part if you set up a camera to a certain way so like I set up right now to aperture priority everything is set up to dual camera recording so this camera is right now set up for me to go and shoot weddings this is actually something that I learned last year from one of my friends um, you can check his Instagram here he's an amazing photographer he told me that he and actually saves all his default wedding settings to one of the dials so whenever he's going for a wedding he could just go quickly change to mode dial one and be like this is my wedding setup like dual camera recording like all the stuff that you might have changed when you were doing stuff you know some personal photos or some stuff so maybe you went back from simultaneous to just one card maybe you just quickly change from raw to jpegs or some crazy stuff to avoid these accidents you, you can just save all the default wedding settings to one of the dials so then when you when you go for a wedding you just go to number one and bam you have all your settings and yeah i had a situation last year that when 
one of my second shooters um, that was shooting groom preparations was using JPEG images because she shot some other project and she was using JPEGs just before the wedding. So then she, when she picked up camera for wedding, she started shooting JPEG. Hi, Victoria, if you're watching this. And then to avoid situation like this, you might want to record, save those settings to one of the dials. And in order to do that, um, you need to go back here to shooting mode and camera set memory. And right now you are setting all the settings to a camera memory, which means one, two or three on the mode dial. Okay. Um, so when you click this, this is the settings you have right now. You can just go down and see like all the details, what, what I have set up and what is set up here. And all these details, when you're going to click the center button, uh, you're going to register so you can see, you can decide if you want to go mode dial one, two or three and just click and register. And that's why on the mode dial one, I have my basic wedding settings on mode dial two. I have my flash uh, settings number one and mode dial three. I have my flash settings number three. So, so I have right away like quick basic set, set settings for my flash photography as well. And that is why also you have seen that one of my custom buttons was set to record those settings. So number two is the bounce flash setting. Number three is going to be dragging the shutter flash settings. So th this is base settings. They're going to depend on whatever location I'm shooting, how dark it is, what light there are and so on. So this is base settings that I will probably override during a wedding. So that's why under C4 button, I can just quickly change these settings and register them at the wedding. Here at the bottom, you can also register some of the settings to be recalled with when holding a button. So that's also um, could be useful. So for example, how to use it, you could uh, maybe have your camera set to uh, by standard to shoot um, medium speed continuous shooting. So six uh, frames per second. And you can here on register custom shoot settings, um, you could actually register settings with a high speed. And then by pressing this button, you will just change the settings just for the moment that you are pushing that button. So you can just quickly maybe go to a higher frame uh, mode. Th that's one idea of using it. Uh, if you have any other ideas how to use this, feel free to let me know. I think that's it. That's how I use my cameras. I hope this was helpful. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this. And yeah, you can support me by purchasing my presets, purchasing the editing masterclass, and yeah, subscribing and enjoying my content. Thanks so much. See you guys in the next video. Bye.